Hey, we're back to make another video, and we're gonna see what this dumpster has to offer today. Look at that. Huh. Really don't wanna take this whole sink with me, but we'll try to get that thing off of there. chunk of door stuff I'll just take the whole thing with it's like one of the people here dumped some of their own stuff in here today, this time root tear upholstery and a chair a post a pro scan TV with the cord on it check that out might actually just take this whole thing with. See if it works, one, two. Some of these older ones have a decent boards in them, have decent boards in them. So I'll probably just take that whole thing with me. What else we got cooking in here? Plastic car parts. There's something kind of parts. A steel door. Empty box, empty box. <laughs> and I don't see much else in here this time. Go back around the other side, make sure, and I'll grab that box. There's the remote for that TV, I bet, right there. Huh. I don't think I saw it behind that wood post. See if I can get that faucet off of there too. Let's see if it just wants to loosen up on its own. It might if I take a little hammer to it. So I'm gonna work on that stuff. You guys don't wanna sit and watch me take a faucet off of here. So I'll do that. Let's see if I can get the remote. A little box of goodies here. And now let's go to the next one. I guess I could show you guys this. Take a faucet off a sink, it's usually just two of these. Sometimes they're plastic, these happen to be plastic, but sometimes there's brass ones under there. Sometimes there's metal ones, but usually all I take is my hammer. And just tap it down and break it loose. Because people put thread lock on it or it's just, you know, rust or sediment or, you know, dried up. Dried up water. Um, and if these are porcelain, you can just hit them with a the hammer and it'll shatter. But having said that, um, it, they're sharp. I mean, put some safety glasses on and have some gloves on while you do it because those things are broken porcelain will cut you like glass no joke so if you ever do it just you know shut your eyes look away have some gloves on give it a swing good hard swing and usually it'll shatter enough that you can get the pieces out and just bust all the pieces off that thing will fit through there of course that thing won't fit through right right You can just do that to them, squash them down a little bit. They'll pop right through just like that. 
And this might be aluminum, cast aluminum. This part's metal, this part's gonna be brass. This is brass, you got a copper deal in the middle here, but just take a file to it. And, uh, well, I can do it here probably. Yeah, that's gonna be cast aluminum. You can see the, it's shiny, they're not red, but there's still enough little brass parts in here. This thing probably spins off there, get the brass off of there. I can pop that part out of there pretty easily. So that's that. Let's go to the next one. Well, I thought it was recording and I guess it wasn't. But this is that uh, dumpster where I was getting the Sony headphones last time and I put a little bit more in here. Those are all basically brand new Sony headphones. Three pair and a little bit of wire. You get the cutters and cut that stuff off of there. What do we got here? That's probably a piece of stainless on there and that thing, so I guess I'll take that with me. But yeah, man, those Sony headphones are nice. I tested those things out. You saw that in the last video. Snarl mess. All right, I'll have to be put them back here. I'll just be gentle with them. Leave that up here. And I, uh, of course, I left my good cutters at home. I mean, these are work great, but they're hard to cut big wire with when you find it. What are these things made out of? I got no idea. I don't run across them very often. Anybody know? The heating elements? It looks like it's got a chunk of aluminum, a little circuit board, some wire. Gonna have a motor in there. So I'll take that with me. Come on. There you go. That, and there's a few other little pieces I'll clean up in here, but I'm not gonna go too crazy. Bunch of cans and stuff. But yeah, I got uh, most of them last time. There's just a few more. They threw a couple on the top and I got those, so that's cool enough to put the, I'm using that one to wedge the door open. So I'll do that stuff and then uh, we'll see what's in the next one, I guess, huh? Steel cabling in there, huh? That stuff's up in there a lot. It's some kind of a rigging place, but I can't take that stuff. It's just too bulky and big for my car. And it's just a bunch of office trash, I think. And a bunch of spray cans and stuff like that, I guess. To load these things up in my car. Just think they'll fit in there. If I could, if I could take those, I would take that steel, man. That's right. That's probably. I bet you that's uh, two and a half tons, three tons, each one of those pipes, and that big steel piece probably is about. Bet you eight tons, 10 tons maybe. I don't know. That'd be worth it. So I checked those over there. There's nothing going on in there. But we do have something going on in here. We got a tube TV. And it looks to me like the remnants of a karaoke machine. I don't know what it looks like. But 
the singing machine. What do you got in there? Some circuit board, some wire. It's usually some pretty low grade stuff in these things, but there's enough of it, I'll take it. Let's see if we can leave some of the garbage behind and not break this. Uh, I don't really want this big wood piece. I don't really need that big speaker. But I'll take that. So there is a tube here and I do not want to break it. So I don't really feel like breathing that stuff in. But I'm uh, lucky enough I have a, a recycling yard that will take these things from me for free. I don't have to pay for it. So that is very nice. So we'll take that for the stuff. But you know, these little circuit boards, they add up. It's nothing, you know, I'm not gonna get rich off of these things, but they're usually brittle enough and they don't really care if you if they're broken. So that one's all hooked to that thing on the back. So we'll just let that go, clip the cord off the back. Yeah, there's some screws back there. That's just gonna come out in a million pieces. So we'll let that be. And then this guy, what am I dealing with? An Emerson DVD player. Wonder what this DVD is in here. Let's see if we can get it out. I might just take this whole thing with me. Let's see if get that DVD out of there. in there huh you know this is small enough I don't have to mess with it too much I'll just take the whole thing with me I'll scrap it out safely and dispose of the tube safely and properly biggest thing is you do not want to uh, break those things those tubes it's dangerous to breathe in the dust and so on and so forth you can uh, some people say it's not a big deal some people say it's the glass shards that's bad the gas that's in it's bad believe who you want um, I tend to err on the side of that it's not good for you so there's no need to break them so why break them right doesn't make any sense to take the easy way out just because some YouTube commenter guy says it's okay to uh, take a hammer to him. So here I call it dumpster row because I got five dumpsters in here that I look through. One of them from time to time is pretty good. This one here. This is where I got a couple of rats and that's where the wires out of. Oh, there's a phone back. There's some phones in there. We'll definitely get those out. Like the office phones. We got a few of them in there. Looks like. Oh yeah. Awesome. We're gonna fish those out of here. So what I was gonna say is uh Well, hang on, let me get my stuff out. All right, there's a little stuff I got off camera there. Um, so what I was gonna say was, um, we'll take a look at that TV when we get back. The one that 
the flat screen. We'll see if it works. One, two, the other one. Um, tube one. Let's see, Polycom. I don't know about that brand name too much, but the tube one. I'll get it taken apart, and I think I'll run down to the recycling yard, and I'll show you guys that recycling yard if you guys want to see it. Actually, nice, uh, nice service they provide. Taking that kind of stuff, the tube TVs, and you know, junk like that. They'll take all that stuff for free from me. So those smaller ones, a lot of times I don't scrap them out. I might have to get my smaller hook to get some of these. Um, I don't usually scrap them out just because it just because the hassle factor of it. But sometimes those smaller ones, when they're in the dumpsters like that, I'll just take them and pop the stuff out of them real quick and then bring them down to the yard instead of them em ending up in the, in the landfill where they're not supposed to be. So anyway, phones. Phones are an interesting thing. A um, couple, I don't know, I don't remember if I recorded it or not, but I found about three boxes of Panasonic desk phones like this. And I sold them on line for, I think it was 275 for six of one kind, and I think it was 225 for six of another kind. So they're both Panasonics, they're just different models. However, they can be worth some money. And I'll tell you what, that a guarantee that these phones work. If you find one phone in a dumpster like this for business, they probably, the phone broke. If you find 10 or 12 phones in a business, they probably got a new phone system and they're fine. So having said that, um, I don't sell them unless I know for a fact, like I talked to the guy that gave them to me and he says they work. Otherwise, I uh, basically sell them as parts and repair on eBay. And I just explain to them, you know, in my auction, how I got them. And, you know, they can bid accordingly. It's not my business how they want to bid, as long as I'm being upfront honest about what I, you know, what I have. So, hope that makes sense. But they can have some value even as parts and repair. All right, so here we are. I'm hoping you can see this, okay? Let me take my glasses off so I can see. So this is a, a Polycom Soundpoint IP550 SIP. And here is used auctions. So if you're trying to figure out what something's worth on eBay, look under completed auctions. Don't look at what people are selling them for. I could ask $10,000 for these. It doesn't make them worth 10 grand. It matters what they've sold for. So these are all pre-owned phones here. So here's one that sold for $20, free shipping. Um, refurbished ones go a little bit higher. So on and so forth. Here's some that didn't sell, you know, so on and so forth. So there's pretty wide range, like here's a whole bunch that only I don't know I don't know maybe one sold for ten dollars so it looks like they kind of have a here's a five lot that sold for fifteen dollars so it's kind of a wide range of things so what I'll probably do is I'll probably just put this thing up on um, eBay and put them at like you know 50 bucks for all of them and see if they sell let them you know go for a month if they don't sell um, then I just then I'll just scrap them out but yeah, I mean, that's kind of shows you office phones, even if they're used, even sometimes even if they don't work, can still be worth some money on the better brands. So let's go check that dumpster down there. Let's go do this and ride down here with me. I'm going to put my glasses back on so I can see what I'm doing. What do we got here? Ah, 
a giant couch. A giant couch with a nice deer motif on it. Not too bad this table's broken. That'd have actually been a nice little table. couch hey hey 25 cent I'll take it send it to the vid vulture slash scrap vulture you can put it in this farkle jar So, uh, when I was getting those other two phones out of there, I was kind of thinking about, uh, you know, people, I get comments like, oh, why didn't you just get in the dumpster, you know? And I say to them, well, I don't need to get in the dumpster. Everything I can get, I get with that stick. I've, I've got 95% of what I can get out of dumpsters I get with that stick. Um, I'm 47 years old, I'm six foot seven. I weigh about 320 pounds, I'm not a little guy, I'm like the size of an NFL lineman. Um, I've got six screws on this ankle, I've had two knee surgeries on this knee, and I've got a hip that I have problems with from time to time. This is a part-time thing for me, I work full-time to support my family. This is extra money and for fun that I do this. I'm not gonna hop in and out of dumpsters and hurt myself and screw my knee up or screw my ankle up or screw my hip up and all that kind of stuff. It's just, I can get anything I need with that stick. Sometimes it takes me a little extra time to do it. So be it. That's why I don't get into dumpsters. I just, I've rooted through dumpsters and pulled up bag and there's broken shards of glass in there from some picture frame in there or, um, you know, people throw, bags of gross garbage in there and I don't feel like sticking my foot in that stuff. I'm just, it's not, it doesn't have any interest for me to get into dumpsters. That's why I do it. If I was a young guy and I was in better shape and my body wasn't uh, having the problems it has, I'd get in them if I could. It's just, I don't need to. So we're gonna go check a couple more dumpsters. We'll take a look at those TVs and uh, maybe run down to the recycling yard. Let's go. Well, there's the flat screen TV. Seems to be working fine. It's doing a channel search right now. I don't have it hooked up to an antenna or anything like that, so I might not find anything, but seems to be coming on fine. So I don't know what I'll do with it now. I'll have to kind of give it some thought. I don't need it, but maybe I'll find somebody that needs it. But remote works. Everything seems to be working fine on it right now. So that's good. We'll take that. So... Here's the inside of the tube TV after I removed the shell, which I'm keeping whole. I'm not trying to break it. I'm keeping the screws because this will end up back on here and back screwed down. So here's your tube right here. Um, so when you set it down like this, you want to be gentle with it. You don't want to break it. So to get this off, here's the big copper yoke right here. And it's this is all pretty easy to get off of there. It's all pretty much with that set screw right there. These little guys right here. So it's easy enough to take like that. This thing will gently just give it a little wiggle and that'll pop right off the end of the TV. Here's that clamp we unscrewed right there. These things, I don't know what the heck they are, but usually these will just kind of pop off and get out of your way. Of course, this one won't for whatever reason. Oh, there's another set screw on this one. Maybe that's why. Another clamp, whatever you want to call it. Oh, hang on, let me get these things off. So guy's gonna start his muscle car up across the street. So that's that. So you got everything, all this stuff out of your way. Um, you want to cut a couple of these wires off of here. The ones that are attached to the yoke. Those make your life a little bit. There you go. Make your life a little bit easier taking this thing off. You can always just clean up the wires after 
you get the smoke off of there. So that's all off of there. And then this thing, of course I can't do it with one hand because of the... Sorry, this isn't the way I was hoping it would do. But then that comes off of there that easy. So just got to be kind of gentle with it. And you get the nice copper yoke off of there. So your yard will probably buy this the way it is. Uh, mine gives me, I think, 70 cents a pound for copper yolks. But I could bust all that out of there and bust the ferrite core out and get these things out. Get these uh, candy coated copper things out of there and you'd end up with number two copper with that if you wanted to do it. But they kind of make a mess. It's up to you. And then there's usually a big black wire that'll go around the TV. Most of the time it's copper. And it's usually a nice heavy copper wire. If I can get it out of here, it's hard to do with one hand. But yep, that's a nice heavy duty copper wire on that one. Um, the bigger TVs have the bigger wire. It's called a deglousing wire. And it goes around the tube of the TV. Um, so that'll usually go as your number one wire. Some yards have, I've seen a couple of yards have prices just for that wire, that kind of wire. But I don't know if they do that anymore just because there's it's not as common anymore. And then there'll be a second wire here, this silvery wire, and that is copper. I don't know if it's tin or nickel coated or whatever it is, but that would go in your number two wire. And then you end up with just a big circuit board. You can pluck things off of there like a transformer here or you know so on and so forth, but that TV boards are, in old TVs are almost just go as low grade boards. So it's worth it to pluck whatever you want off of there. So I'm going to get this thing cleaned up, put it back together. I'm going to eat a little breakfast.